So, as of August 14, 2020, popular anime streaming website Kiss Anime is shut down. The official Kiss Anime team posted the following on their Discord server. All files are taken down by copyright owners. Kiss Manga and Kiss Anime will be closed forever. Thank you for your support. Thank you for those years. Kiss Anime has been destroyed via a refinement of piracy laws in Japan. In my estimation, this creates three major issues for the anime community. I'll get into that. But first, we must look at how they were able to operate over the years and what caused the closure. In terms of how they were able to operate, observe the following. The author is not responsible for any contents linked or referred to from his pages. If any damage occurs by the use of information presented there, only the author of the respective pages might be liable, not the one who has linked to these pages. Kiss Anime doesn't host any of the content. Kiss Anime DMCA page. So, to translate, the videos embedded on the Kiss Anime site were not hosted by Kiss Anime, and based on Japan's law at the time, the copyright holders would be unable to take action against Kiss Anime directly. Japan recently enacted a revised anti-online piracy law to tighten copyright control, banning illicit downloading of manga, magazines, and academic texts, in addition to music and videos that were already covered by the existing legislation. The law also regulates leech websites that provide users hyperlinks to download so-called torrent files of pirated materials. This ban on illegal downloading will take effect on January 1st next year, while restrictions of leech websites will come into effect on October 1. The law revision came as the country saw a rising number of piracy and leech websites, notably the Manga Mura site, which had over 100 million hits a month before being disabled in April 2018 causing an estimated loss of more than 300 billion yen or about 2.75 billion US dollars to publishers. Mangamura hosted unauthorized copies of popular manga titles including Attack on Titan and One Piece. However, the amended legislation exempted minor offenses and special instances from being categorized as illicit amid concerns that excessive restrictions could hinder the internet and freedom of expression. The Agency for Cultural Affairs lists examples that can be exempted, such as downloading only a few frames from a comic book of several dozen pages and a couple pages from a novel containing hundreds of pages. Parodies and derivative work are also exempt, as well as cases where smartphone users unintentionally captured copyright publications in their screenshots. As for illegal downloading, penalties for repeat offenders will be up to two years in jail or a maximum fine of two million yen or both. The new legislation allowed copyright holders to shut down the video servers which Kiss Anime embedded from and make sure that the website itself was no longer viable. I see several problems with closing down Kiss Anime. The reason it was so popular is that it solves several problems. Number one, it solves the issue we sometimes confront with regards to availability of anime. Kiss Anime is the largest collection of anime. It had new and ancient anime going back to the 70s and before. They had licensed and unlicensed anime alike. There is no legal product as robust. The most prominent legal alternatives are Funimation, Crunchyroll, and Netflix. Their selections pale in comparison and the inevitable result is that some anime titles will be lost forever. Anime like Macross or To Love Rue 
which aren't available on any streaming platform, will be lost to time and won't be discovered by new anime fans allowing the fan base to perpetuate in the future. The classics that were only distributed on DVD, they were all on Kiss Anime, and now they will all disappear into obscurity. The second issue is region based. I'm from Jamaica. This means that not all streaming services are available for me. Kiss Anime made no discrimination in regards to region. Anyone from anywhere could come discover anime. As long as you could watch a few ads, you could watch anything you wanted. I know I can use a VPN service to rectify the region availability issue, but that's another subscription service that would be required. Jamaican dollar no worth nothing, so I'm not interested in spending another cent. Number three is that to get coverage of all the new anime coming out, we will have to subscribe to multiple streaming platforms. Just as Disney+, Plus, Netflix, and Amazon are required to enjoy all the new series, us anime fans will require Netflix con Crunchyroll and whatever else they tell us to pay for in order to enjoy all the new seasonal releases and possibly get to see some of the relicensed classics. I remember when anime was a very obscure segment of entertainment, and these anime sites were so niche and important, waiting weeks for fan subs. I never imagined there would be a day where we would have simulcasts and anime being streamed on services carrying Hollywood movies. But alas, here we are. Kiss Anime's demise is a direct result of anime going mainstream and the resulting profitability. The loss is caused by sites like Kiss Anime is now quantifiable, and in the estimation of the accountants, it outweighs the benefit of discovery that these sites provide. The anime going mainstream means we do get better anime, but one can't help but think that it has lost its soul. We will miss you dearly, Kiss Anime. Thanks for watching today. All sources are attached in the description for further reading. Please like and subscribe. See you next time.